everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well today. And I bet you're wondering why I'm wearing the skull cap now. Especially considering the high today from my air was 75. Well, it's not 75 anymore. This cold front that is responsible for these severe reports, as well as these severe reports, has just passed through my area and we've already dropped like 20 degrees. So it's going to be a chilly night here. And a lot of people are already feeling that way. In last night's streams, there was people that were talking about that. So, yeah, brace yourselves. So this next day or two is going to be a little chilly, but we'll bounce back pretty quick. But that being said here, let's get into the reports that we saw from uh, yesterday and really this morning's event. Because here's the thing. We had quite a few uh, tornadoes over here towards Ohio, one over towards Springfield even that uh, apparently produced ef2 damage i'm pretty sure this is just a preliminary rating it might be final we'll see what happens with that we don't try to get into uh ratings here too much because they can sometimes be controversial and a point of debate but that's a place that's a that's for another time in another place with that being said 14 tornado reports total yesterday we covered at least the first half of it but i was not honestly predicting that the morning hours or around 5 a.m. was going to end up being an active time but as we uh, came to find out we were wrong and it ironically is from the same supercell that I was watching at almost 2 in the morning so it ended up producing a slew of damaging wind reports and then eventually produced tornado damage in uh, west central Ohio how about that then we also had a slew of wind reports over here towards uh, northern Kentucky. Louisville was even in that mix, as well as some hail reports. So the report, so the uh, severe reports really trended upward as we went into the evening here. And then today, we've had quite a few uh, wind reports with severe and even a couple of more hail reports. Pretty sure this was just after about 7 a.m. And then even Atlanta got into the action here with some uh, damaging wind reports surprising to say the least considering we had only a marginal risk and really at one point this wasn't even a marginal risk there was no severe risk but that being said though it just shows how uh, what these storm systems can do you can never really tell until they happen forecasting is a tough game i tell you but that being said we're going to go ahead and take a look at what's next because that's often what we have to do after a storm like this goes through just what is next so we're going to go ahead and take a look into the medium range here. We're going to start out with the uh, Euro and then go to the GFS. And we're going to kind of switch back and forth here. We're not going to get too heavy into the parameters. But there's still some talk of the town going on here. Because here's the thing. We do get some ridging to come back into play here. And while this is nothing like what it once was, this trough here that I'm about to talk about that's slated for the third and the fourth, there still could be a little something there. I think it'll be rather limited, but there is predictability too low mentioned here around this third and fourth time frame here. So the third and the fourth would be right towards day five. Day five, predictability too low. And then day six, predictability too low. And really that trend continues throughout those next few days beyond that point. So this trough here is going to be a point of interest regardless. I do kind of think we may see another little sneaky trough here from the uh, subtropical jet and maybe some Gulf Coast severe weather could be possible as well as Florida. For the most part, I don't really see anything going on towards the heart of the country maybe till the 8th. And even then, like I said, we're so far away and we've seen plenty of storm systems look insane around this time frame and then downtrend significantly. So like I said, I'm not going to read too, too heavily into this. But if this signal verifies, we could be looking at a Dixie Alley setup, possibly. Maybe something linear. Could be maybe some subtle forcing as well. But like I said, there's a lot more that I would want for uh, I would want for to come together for this storm system. Thing is, GFS is showing a rather similar picture, I would say. Here's that ridge that I'm talking about, and then here's that storm system. Now the interesting thing with the GFS is it does give this a slightly better chance of severe further to the north however the warm sector really i think is going to be the big problem and then large scale ascent so i wouldn't be too too concerned about the third or the fourth right now 
can things change of course this could easily uptrend just like it can downtrend just like we've seen a lot of downtrends so with that being said we'll have to watch of course towards the gulf coast states as well albeit when i look at the gfs i don't see anything that's magnanimous right now however this next storm system here does catch my eye a little bit more and this might have to be watched for maybe some Gulf Coast severe weather and maybe even winter weather over here towards the uh, southern and central plains here. May even see some snowfall out of that. So I'm going to be watching that very closely. And here's where I start to become interested towards the Gulf Coast again, maybe Dixie Alley. Notice that the uh, these uh, contour, these iso, uh, these iso bars, if you will, are... A little bit tighter here and a little further off to the south so this like i said this could be the difference here between a gulf coast storm and maybe a dixie alley storm because if we compare this to the euro right about which will right about at that same time frame this is definitely taking more of a southern track then after that point this is all gfs euro doesn't go out to this range we do see a couple more stout systems to start out the month of February. So we'll be keeping an extra close eye on things from that point. And then really, I think the back half of February might become a little bit more active. I think we're going to be at a slow simmer for the start of severe weather season. And as we get later into the year, we're going to probably pick up from there. But that being said, we'll keep the ball rolling here and go to our temperatures because that's going to be a big topic in the in the uh, short term here so let's go ahead and go into tomorrow morning which is going to be pretty brutal for anyone that's over here towards midwest and the northeast in particular we're starting to see those teens sneak back into the picture but like i said before it's not going to take us too long to bounce back here especially once that ridge comes back into play which we start to see to begin the month of march we're starting to get those lows back into the 40s and into the 50s. Then before we know it, those 60s and those 70s are starting to come back into play for a large part of the heart of the U.S. and then even into the deep south. This, of course, still kind of lends itself to a decent severe setup. So, like I said, still keeping our eyes open here. This kind of almost looks a little bit like a carbon copy to what we just saw. But like I said, I think large-scale ascent could still be an issue. If we can get that warm sector to push north, though, we could be looking at a different picture here. So with that in mind, we'll probably get into the details more within the next couple of days here. That way we might be able to have something a little bit more concrete. And then as we continue to go forward beyond that point, we're going to see pretty much a continuation of that pattern. And then, of course, I'm favoring uh, this uh, Gulf Coast type setup here for for uh, right around the mid part of March, maybe just a little bit before it. GFS kind of paints a different picture because as we saw on that uh, wind map there, we were looking more so at a southern track at the mid part of the month after that 10 day period. Here's what I'm talking, and here's exactly what I'm talking about there. We see a warm sector pop up here right around that similar time frame, but it kind of hangs more around the Gulf Coast states. Not so much Dixie Alley, but we still could see something with that too. But other than that, we're looking almost identical to start out the month of March. So a decent uh, continuity in that, but we'll um, keep a close eye on it from there. After that point, we end up seeing a nice little exodus of warm air making it all the way up into the great lakes and i do think that if this trend continues we could be setting the stage for a big storm system right around the middle of march so maybe towards saint patty's day we might need to be looking out maybe even a little bit before then so make sure you're wearing your green and staying lucky and staying weather aware i know it was lame i tried that being said, let's go ahead and look at what our precipitation could look like so far as we get from the short into the medium range. A couple of small storm systems over here for the southeast right around the course of the weekend. And then after that, this is when we'll have to watch for that next system. Like I said, the euro kind of has the uh, large scale ascent being the big reason why storms may not fire. 
but like I said, that warm sector does leave me a little bit of a little bit intrigued by that setup here. Could be a cold core severe setup, possibly. Kind of hard to tell at this point, given the fact that we're over 120 hours out at this point, or almost 120 hours out. But we'll just have to keep an eye on that and see how things play out. And then after that point, like I said, Gulf Coast State really looks like a point of interest, maybe Dixie Alley, as we get towards the sixth and beyond. Then after that, another storm system comes in. Pretty similar deal. This kind of has a better look maybe for Dixie Alley as we look towards the 9th and heading into maybe the 10th. Like I said, GFS is showing a slightly different picture. If we uh, go ahead and go forward here, it's pretty much a similar deal the first couple within the first couple of days. Then after that, that storm system and that low pressure trending so far to the north might work against severe weather starting out. But like I said, it kind of has a little bit of that look like the last setup, maybe not quite as potent. But remember, we didn't have that forecast down really at all at any point until storms literally started firing. Because it just kept kind of trending north south it was just kind of wobbling in between so we were just trying to we were just struggling to uh figure it out and i'm not just talking about here on the channel i'm just talking about everybody in the weather community so as we continue to go forward next system comes into play around the sixth towards the eighth or between the sixth and the eighth i should say and then right after that Here's this big storm system. This is where I really start to become more interested after the 8th and into the 9th in the same area of low pressure. And then after that, here's another storm system to follow that. So you can see in the pattern, eventually we do start to ramp up in activity as we get towards the middle part of the month here. So like I said, I think we're going to start off at a little bit of a trickling pace as far as severe weather is concerned. And then as we go further along into the month and deeper into severe season, tornado season, I think we're going to see a spike in activity possibly. Not trying to scare anyone, but I'm trying to keep you on top of things. So that being said, let's make sure we're staying weather aware. Severe season is pretty much upon us already. And we're going to see it become more and more evident over time, it looks like. So let's make sure we're doing what we have to do. Stay tuned to the channel. We'll have more updates coming. We'll have another video up tomorrow afternoon. And until then, take care. Have an awesome day and evening. It's been Tire Metalhead Weatherman. I'll see you next time.